I'm off to the plot. I've got my flask in my bag. Arclair and the girls are coming up shortly after me and they've, they've hopefully they'll be bringing another flask. Right, we've got to, uh, got big plans and it involves the polytunnel in my backyard, some bricks and some squares of uh, polycarbonate greenhouse things. So let's see what I'm up to. So the reason I went to the allotment was to get this and the reason that I needed this polytunnel it's got to go right so we've had this about what six years I think now and then in that in that bed there we had um, lots of chili plants and basil this year over the years we've grown all sorts in here squashes cucumbers tomatoes peppers Cucumber melons, all kinds of different things. Um, but I also keep seedlings in here on cuttings, and there's my, my cuttings box, which needs a bit of a weed to be honest with you. But if we look, can we do it from the inside? Um, it really is knackered. I mean, all the storms we get over winter, it's uh, taking its toll, it's full of holes. You can see here. Most of the seam here is, is ripped, so we've just done a job with sticky tape on it and it's been like this for a couple of years now. So it's, it's had its day, we've well had our money's worth out of it, I think we paid about £60. Um, it's time for it to go now though. I mean look, you, look, you shouldn't be able to do that should you? I mean I'm all for ventilation but come on. Right, so we're going to take this down. And then in this spot in the yard, um, that spot there, where those two tyres are, using the plastic sheet thing, I'm going to build like a cold frame so that my ceilings and the polytunnel at least have still got somewhere to go. So I need to take the polytunnel down, move these tyres and build the cold frame. So first thing, all these bricks that are currently weighing down all the, the skirting we're, we're taking up and we're stacking so they go all the way around um, and that's what we're going to use to give us some height on the cold frame are they heavy ruby <laughs> do i owe you even more pocket money for helping with this we found a frog i found quite a few today to be honest there it is look there's another one moves so there's two there's actually two <laughs> there's that one there and then there's one do you want me to move the brick? down the side there. Um, so we're just going to move the bricks away nice and carefully and hope that they'll find somewhere else to go and hide. I don't like frogs. So Ruby's just had a bit of a moment. She said it's been there since she was about four years old, hasn't it Ruby? Um, yeah, we might get another one at some point in the future. Right. Let's get the cover off. So what we've done is we've removed all the bricks that were around the outside. Look, we've got a nice little pile there now. And they were, they were going to use those to build a cold frame. But first, we need to carry on taking this polytunnel down. And this is why I call Ruby the deputy head gardener. She really is my right hand woman in the garden. Look at her getting stuck in. She's half the size of me, yet she's trying to get that really big piece of plastic off. Oh, Dad, it's about to go down in the Right, well, we'll take it up to that end then. So in terms of value for money, this cost us £60 six years ago. We've been groaning it for each of those six years. So that works out in terms of like a rent um, at £10 a year. Now even with a little bit of compost, a little bit of money spent on slug pellets and seeds and buying the odd plant, which adds to that £10 a year cost, the amount of food we've got out of that polytunnel, we've, we've probably, what's it called when you've, you've made money? In the black, is it? We're probably in the black, we're not in the red. We really have had an, a staggering amount of food. One year... I grew some Rolay squash in it and 
we thought we had problems this year with the amount of courgettes we've had. The roll a squash we're, we're ten times more. Right, we'll keep that because if we build any more wood chip packs on the allotment, I can put it underneath the wood chip. Let's get everything out of it now. Is anybody else in the very fortunate position that their children and their family members help them in the garden? Leave a comment, let me know. Tell me who helps you in your family when you're gardening. Do your children get involved? Next step, raised bed. We were going to completely empty the raised bed and then actually move these um, wooden pallet collars as well. But to be honest with you, it was taking that long and we were running out of space to put the compost. We just literally haven't got anywhere to put it. So we stopped doing it about halfway through. So I sent Ruby inside for a very well deserved break while I started tackling taking down the metal poles. I'm going to keep these poles because I will be able to make something out of them in the future. Um, if I use, you know, the front half and the back half, I've got instant archways. And if I tie some bamboo canes in between them, that archway then becomes a trellis. So I, I will use them again, I'll keep them. The most important thing though, is to get them hidden somewhere. <laughs> Before our Claire sees them and says, Oh, you've been in those, aren't you? Because I'm not been in those. I've been nothing in my backyard. Because sooner or later, everything will present itself with another use. I don't always know what that other use is going to be at the time, but nine times out of 10, I've always been proved right. So I, things like that are so worth keeping. Next job, I've got to move these two tires. The one on the right that I'm tackling now has got rhubarb in. The one on the left has got five garlic bulbs. These now have to be moved to make space for the cold frame to where the polytunnel was. And then before I can start putting all the bricks down to make the wall for the cold frame, I've got to give it a good clean out. So my original plan to build this cold frame was using some squares of plastic that you'd use in a greenhouse instead of glass. But when I got up to the allotment, I realized that we had this piece of corrugated plastic behind the shed that we'd forgotten about. So I thought that would be a lot easier because that way I can treat it as one single roof rather than having to build lots of separate supports to support each individual square of plastic. The tall plastic box on the left is the box that houses my passion flower vine. And because my brick laying skills are non-existent, I'm not even overlapping them. It's not really load bearing. The only load that this will have to support is the piece of corrugated plastic. So we're butting the bricks right up to the plastic box that has the passion vine. And then on the left hand side and then on the right hand side, we're building up to those stones which make up my mint bed. We've just rejigged it around slightly because that back corner, it was struggling to stay up. So we took the bricks from the front out, put them in a, a corner shape in the back. We replaced those bricks with that, which is almost pretty much the same kind of height. So Ruby, do you want to um, put the lid on, see if it works?
There you go, that corner's supporting it lovely now. And then just that across the bricks, just the way down. And I think jobs are good in. What do you think, Reeves? Yeah. Right, we've had another little rejig. We've brought it forward slightly because the plastic was overhanging quite a bit. It's a much snugger fit now. Um, we've got that on there weighing it down. Ruby's had a play, it's not going anywhere. The only thing now is there is just a couple of inches gap at the back there, but I'm gonna tell myself that that's for ventilation. So that is actually, I'm quite happy with that. I think we've done a good job there, Ruby. Yeah, so all we need to do now is get all the um, little pots of overwintering seedlings in there, things that we planted in the autumn like the sweet peas. And that, jobs are good and it's covering up the mint bed as well, but that's, that's not a bad thing, I suppose. We'll just take it off in spring when the mint starts going, because by then these things will be ready as well, hopefully, so. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video of how Ruby and I demolished our polytunnel and replaced it with a cold frame using some reclaimed materials, just odds and ends that we had lying around. Have any of you guys got a cold frame? Let me know, leave a comment. If you liked watching this, please press the thumbs up button and also why not subscribe and then that way you won't get to miss out on future videos.